Hi, Donna here, and I'm back with another great decoupage tutorial. Are you getting married, or do you know someone who is? If so, you'll want to watch this video. I'll be showing you how to do decoupage, how to do some 3D stenciling, how to personalize with pictures and adding vinyl. I'll show you how to use air dry clay for some amazing 3D effects. All easy, step-by-step, follow-along instructions. Are you ready to make a mess? Let's get started. I'm going to start off with some decoupage. I purchased this shadow box on Amazon. I'm opening it up right now and removing everything so that I can work on it. I cut a piece of thin cardboard to fit. I have a selection of papers that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to tear them into pieces and cover the cardboard with them. I don't want any sharp cut lines, so I'm tearing the paper and that way it'll have a nice jagged edge and look worn. The best way to do this is to spray the paper with water. It makes it very easy to tear. Where are you watching from? I'd love to know. Send me a quick comment. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. This rose paper is vellum and it really doesn't like water very much, so I'm not spraying it. I'm going to add Mod Podge to all the paper pieces and add them all to the piece of cardboard that I cut out. And this is going to be my background. The bump paper doesn't really like the Mod Podge either. It buckles just a little bit when you put it on, but it actually looks good when it's dry. It gives it kind of the old look that I'm going for on this piece. This video is a little longer than my normal ones, but if you watch to the end, you'll be amazed at the outcome. This project combines a lot of mixed media techniques. Let me know which technique you enjoyed learning the most. some words of love that I cut from another paper. They say things like love, I love you, to have and to hold. I'm going to add them on top of what I just did. I'm using a sponge roller to make sure everything is flattened out on my cardboard. Now that I have all the pieces glued on the cardboard, I'm going to give the whole thing a coat of Mod Podge. I created a picture of my niece and her husband, which is who I made this for. I added a sepia tone to the picture and added a filter that makes it look like marble. 
I printed it and now I'm going to get it ready to add to my background. Since I just used printer paper, it's a little bit thick, so I'm going to thin it out a little bit. That just makes it a little bit easier to work with. I'm using packing tape and I'm going to cover the entire back side of the picture. Now I'm going to peel off the tape and it will take off a layer of the paper, which will leave it the consistency of tissue paper or erase paper, which is great for decoupage. I've tried this method with several types of packing tape. The brown one with a shiny side is the only one that I found that would do this correctly. I want to get rid of the white border and the sharp cut edges. I'm using a water brush to do this. You can buy these at any hobby store, or if you don't have one, you can just dip a paintbrush in some water and you will have the same effect. Since it's inkjet, it'll smear very easily, so I'm not able to spray the whole thing with water like I did the others. I'm going to go very carefully around the edges of the photo and then remove the excess. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe share it with your friends. And I'm using Mod Podge again to glue it down. I'm making some embellishments for the frame. I made a bride and groom dancing and now I'm making some roses and leaves. I'm using DAS air dry clay and I'll let these dry overnight. Get your paintbrushes ready. It is time to paint all the little embellishments. I'm painting everything white and then I'll be antiquing them after they dry. And it looks like I'm getting as much paint on myself as I am on all the little embellishments. The paint is dry and now it's time to add the antiquing. This will give them some dimension. I'm taking some dark brown paint and adding water to make it really runny. I'm covering the entire piece with the watery brown paint. Then I'm going to wipe it all off. You'll see that it stays in the cracks and crevices and adds just a ton of dimension. And again, I am covering myself with more paint than I am the little objects. I am going to really pretty these up now. I'm adding some white frost wax rub. It actually gives them kind of a pearlescent look. 
and brightens them up a little bit. I'm going to take them outside and finish them off with a coat of Triple Glaze Sealer. This will make them really shiny, and who doesn't like shiny objects? Everything is dry now, so I'm going to glue them to the front of the frame. I'm using E6000 glue. This stuff will literally withstand anything. And then I'm going to let it dry overnight. While I'm waiting for the frame to dry, I'm going back to my background. I'm going to emboss a couple of flourishes. I'll be stamping the embossing ink where I would like the flourishes to be, and then I'll coat them with the embossing powder. tap off the excess, I'll dry it with a heat gun. This melts it and you get a shiny pattern on your paper. I'm using some pre-mixed tile grout and a stencil to add some ivy around the picture. adding some cheesecloth to one side using Mod Podge just to add a little bit of interest. I'm scrunching it up and pasting it down with the Mod Podge as I go and then at the end I'll cut off the excess. I'm going to further the antique look of this project by adding some brown ink around the edges. I'm going to 
going to personalize the shadow box even more by adding their names and wedding date. I printed these on my Cricut machine, but if you don't have one, you can use either stencils or some of the self stick press on letters. Now that I have these cut out and weeded, I'm going to use some transfer tape to get them onto the glass. I'm burnishing the letters so they will stick to the transfer tape. I used a sharpie to mark the center of the top and bottom of the glass. The marks will wipe off with alcohol afterwards. I'm burnishing one more time just to make sure those letters are stuck really well to that transfer tape. I placed a mark in the center of my lettering as well so I can line it up easily with the marks on the glass and everything will be perfectly centered. Now I'm burnishing to the glass to make sure that once I lift up that transfer tape, all my letters will stick on the glass and not to the transfer tape. And I'm using a squeegee to get a really good seal. Now that I've removed the transfer tape, I'm giving it a quick pass over with a roller to make sure nothing will lift off. And I'm really sorry about the glare in the glass from my lights, you guys. Well, everything is done now and it is time to put it all together. I hope my niece and her husband love this gift. I hope you enjoyed this video and learning something new. Tell me what in this video sparked your interest, what you're going to try in one of your projects. This project was special to me because I made it for my niece and her husband. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to have you as one of my new friends. I've put together a playlist of other mixed media projects. Click the next picture to be taken right to that playlist.